Hello, my name is Father Dimitri. Today I'm going to talk about something that's uh, got to me the last few times I've heard the statement. And that statement is, a lot of times I've heard when different people are preaching, different priests are preaching, or different people say certain things, people will, will make a comment that that's not orthodox enough, or that's not an orthodox message, or that's not an orthodox teaching. And I know a lot of times people that aren't orthodox, it really doesn't make sense to them, even if somebody made that statement. But the actual definition for orthodoxy is, orthodoxy is adherence to correct or accepted creeds, especially in religion. In the Christian sense, the term means conforming to the Christian faith as represented in the creeds of the early church. Yeah, it's true. I could get all the theological on everybody. I could, I could go very, very detailed in a lot of different things. But the truth is, what the Orthodox Church believes is that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died and rose again, and he rescued us. He started the church. He was the originator of the church. He was the one that brought it all about. Orthodoxy is synonymous with Jesus Christ. It's synonymous with what I believe in in Christ. I often do not give myself that label of Greek Orthodox or whatever jurisdiction I'm in, even though I'm Greek, but I often say that I'm an Orthodox Christian because first and foremost, I am a Christian. And a lot of times I've heard the statement made, that sermon just wasn't Orthodox enough. And I question, what do they mean? What, what is that meant? What is, the, what, what is meant by that statement? But then I take another step back and similar people, not during this century, but the time of Jesus, they were the ones doing the same thing to him. When Jesus came and he started teaching people to forgive and to turn the other cheek, and it's not eye, eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, but it's forgive and forgive and forgive, even up to 70 times 7. Jesus taught something that was revolutionary, he taught something that was completely different. He brought something brand new. Even though the heart of Judaism had been there all along, all through the centuries, people somehow just took what was said in the Torah and in the books of Moses or whatever scriptures that they were using, and they used it in a way that they saw fit either to make money or to spread spread the message. One way or the other, for good or bad, the scriptures were used. But it's the same thing that happens today with, a, with we who are called Christians. We use the scriptures as a weapon sometimes, and sometimes we use it as a weapon for good or sometimes a weapon for bad. And we all know that people turn away from God, and we all know that people turn away from the belief of Jesus Christ because most of the time, I'd say 99% of the time, it's because they've seen a bad example of a Christian in their life. Either a parent, or a co-worker, or a friend, or even just plainly seeing what's going on in the world. And especially when people profess to be Christians, and then they deny Him by what they say, what they do, while they act. But what is it to be an Orthodox Christian? First and foremost, it's just plainly to believe in Jesus Christ. You can't separate who we are from Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian, and everybody else that belongs to the Christian faith, that believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we are on equal footing. It's just that we believe and maybe we worship a different way. But the love of God that we have needs to be shared with everybody. And oftentimes, Jesus, when he was teaching, he would teach about things like farming and masonry and different things that would make people understand his message, giving them something that made sense, something that they could take home, and something that they could parallel their own lives with. Oftentimes, with, in modern day, we have all the movies out there, we have comic books, we have different things that go on in our lives that we watch and we spend time with doing, right? We watch movies, we watch different things on TV, we, we read comic books, we read books, we read fantasy novels, or anything else. Is it really beyond the scope of our imagination that 
if Jesus did it during his time and he used whatever was at his disposal to make sense to people, shouldn't we do the same? If I use Iron Man in a sermon, is it unorthodox? Is it something that goes against the church teaching to parallel Iron Man to something of holiness? Maybe Iron Man in itself is not holy, but the hero himself, especially in the movies, when he sacrificed himself, you could parallel that to Jesus. He gave himself up to save everybody else, to make a difference, to make a change. And he embraced who he was and who he became. But is it really that unorthodox to talk about things that make sense to people? Most people don't know about the different saints of the Orthodox faith. Most people don't know about the different things that we practice. But most people do know and have ever watched TV. They know who Iron Man, Thor, and the Incredible Hulk is. And if we can draw a line between them and something that can get them closer to their faith, why not? I would say we need to do whatever it takes, just like Jesus did, to bring people closer to him. Jesus came and introduced something called forgiveness. He introduced something called love. He introduced something called peace. Even though it had been there all the time since the beginning of time, people had forgotten and their hearts had grown cold, especially among the leaders of the synagogue. Their hearts had gone in a different direction and they'd become separated from the people that they were supposed to be ministering to. So we who are Christians, especially the leaders of the church, we need to look to the people and see what they need, see what they can hear, see what they understand. Not to go above their head, not to make them confused so that when they leave the doors of the church that they go home scratching their head wondering, what was that sermon all about? What was today all about? But if they can go home understanding something sticks with them they go home and they tell their spouse if their spouse don't come they go to the store and they share that sermon with somebody and the glory of the lord is shown through then we've done our job we have to prepare all of our people for the things that are to come we have to prepare our people for whatever it is that the world has in store for us because the world does have a lot of terrible things in store for anybody that's called a christian true i may be looking forward in the future it may be today it may be tomorrow but there are certain things happening across the globe right now that are really sad it's something that brings great frustration and sadness to my life especially when christians are being persecuted and we who call ourselves christians we go about our day every day thinking and believing that we're okay if we believe in jesus christ we need to go out into the world and we need to be the light of the world. It's one of my favorite scriptures. We need to be the city on a hill. We need to be that person that people will see and say, no, wait, that's what it means to be a Christian. And if we're not there, if we're not at that place where people can look at us and we can be a shining example of who Jesus Christ is, not a representation of the Orthodox Church or the Protestant Church or the Pentecostal Church. It doesn't matter what church you belong to. And we're not supposed to be an example of that church. We're supposed to be an example of Jesus Christ. We who are Christians, we who profess to be Christians, we need to be willing to do whatever it takes to give the gospel to an unbelieving world. And we need to love unconditionally. It's not always unconditional love that we need it's unconditional acceptance and whatever that means we have to pray that the holy spirit will guide us to understand what that means and what it means to love what it means to accept and what it means to be in a sacrificial relationship with our lord and savior our relationship with god should be one that we look forward to spending an eternity with him in a place where there is no more tears and no more suffering. But while we're here, we need to be the light in the world that's so dark and so scary and so full of anxiety that we need to be the people who can lift others up and show them the way, even if it means everything. So I hope that you are blessed. I hope that you're strong, strengthened, and I hope that you will continue to have courage. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your understanding. May that you be blessed.